Hey, Aaron Adams here with Infinity Investing. Um, topic of conversation today is finance, uh, getting financing, understanding financing. I want to kind of talk about five different um, things that you're going to want to think about with, with respect to getting money for real estate. Uh, when I got started uh, on my real estate investing journey back in 1999, um, my biggest concern was where am I going to find the money? What's ironic about that is that once you understand uh, how lending works and how money works with real estate, uh, it's actually something that you think about the least. Because if you find good deals, there's always money for them. And if you speak the language that lenders want you to speak, meaning if they want to see it in a spreadsheet, how they want you to show them the returns, et cetera, then it's very easy to, um, to raise money for deals. So you know, let's say you've never purchased any property and you're, you're thinking about, like, there's kind of like level one um, financing tips that I could give you. So if you're buying your first property, if you've never used your credit to buy property, then the first thing that you need to know is what your credit scores are. Uh, there's three main credit reporting agencies. A simple Google search can point you to their websites and you actually have the right to get a free copy of your credit report. Uh, I think it impacts it like five points when you pull it. So we're not talking about a huge thing, but even just with one of them. Uh, I have a credit card that gives me free access to my TransUnion report once a month. It's always kind of interesting to see that. Um, and, and I would say with, with re very little activity, um, very little loans or any debt that I have that's tied to my, my personal social security number, um, my credit score will change anywhere from 775 to 825 on a monthly basis. There's like a 15 po 50 point range that it can swing on any given month. And so uh, that's, that's the first step is you need to have a reliable way, a consistent way that you're keeping tabs on your credit score. That's the first piece of advice I would give you. Second thing I want you to think about is you need to know what your debt to income ratio is. When lenders want to rent you the money, they say, what is, what's all the monthly bills that this person has? What's their debt? And how much are they making? So, for example, if you have two thousand a month between your mortgage and your car and you know your credit card, et cetera, um, then your your debt to income ratio is fifty percent. And lenders will have a very specific ratio they want you to qualify for to to get a loan. And so, uh, one of the things if you haven't done this is meet with a lender, meet with a mortgage broker, and have them pre-qualify you, but have them explain specifically what they looked at. So have them walk you through your credit score that they pulled, and have them walk you through your debt to income ratio and how they got to that, that number. That's level one of learning to get financing for a property. Um, I mean, yeah, obviously there's going to be some kind of a down payment requirement. It could be as little as 3% or no money down and as much as 50% down. Um, but kind of uh, the, the, the next tier um, beyond that is, is as an investor. And there's a lot of different ways that you can structure deals. At Infinity Investing, we have a creative finance class that we teach where we walk you through many different strategies that we use. And let me just give you an example from one of the first properties I ever bought. It was like the third property. So I noticed this property on the market. This was in California, in Hemet, California. And it was on the market for $80,000. And uh, as I was looking at the listing, I noticed in the remarks that the realtor had put that the person had a, had a loan on it of $60,000. So um, I requested with my offer for the property, I requested uh, the, the right to present the offer myself. And this was a strategy that I learned at a seminar that I had attended uh, the month previous. And so I said, I would like to present this offer in person to the seller. And that was one of the conditions that, of the offer. And, and I wasn't being represented by an agent. And so he was like, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll get a double commission if this deal goes through. Um, I don't have to split my commission, so why not? So we sat down to meet, and this was a very simple guy. He was a mechanic at a local garage. He had lived in the house for like eight or nine years. I said, I noticed that you owe $60,000 mortgage, and the purchase price is eighty. He said, that's correct. And I said, just out of curiosity, um, uh, you, you're not, I noticed you're not living in the house. He said, no, we already bought another house. I said, okay. So, so I said, I know it's a personal question, but just out of curiosity, what are your plans with the $20,000 uh, that you're going to make on the house if I were to offer this this full $80,000 price. He said, well, I don't know. I'll probably just put it in the bank. I said, okay. And the bank will pay you what? He said, yeah, less than 1%. I said, what if I pay you 10% on your money? He said, what do you mean? I said, so I borrow, I borrow uh, the $20,000 in profits back from you. 
and I pay you $2,000 a year on that money, broken up into 12 monthly payments of, you know, uh, 175 bucks a month or whatever that, the math came out to be. And he's like, huh, yeah, yeah, I mean, that sounds good. You know, how would that work? And I said, I'll bring you a check by every month for, you know, a couple hundred bucks of just interest only payments. And he said, all right, well, you know, why is that good for you? And I said, well, I, you know, I've done two flips and I'd like to do some more here in town. And so I would use this money uh, to, to do my real estate stuff. And he's like, yeah, yeah, you know, I think I would be open to that. I said, okay. I said, just out of curiosity, what if I, um, what if I didn't pay you 80,000 for the house? What if I pay you a hundred thousand for the house? He's like, why would you pay 20,000 over? I said, so that you would loan me $40,000. And, um, he said, well, why don't you just get like, uh, an equity line of credit? And I said, well, I'm worried about being able to qualify for that. But uh, if you loan it back to me, then I'm guaranteed that I qualify. And I know I could, I could qualify for the loan uh, at $100,000. And he's like, and so you're letting me have an extra $20,000. I said, yeah, but I want to borrow it for five years. But then, yeah, you can have it. And he's like, all right, and, well, it sounds, sounds kind of fishy, but why wouldn't I do that? I said, yeah, I mean, for me to have $40,000 in investment money would be fantastic. And so um, the seller of the property was giving me a form of, unconventional financing and I ended up with $40,000. I took that $40,000 and I went to the next property. It was actually a duplex that I found. And I submitted a full price offer on that for $120,000 to the seller. But I asked them to be the bank for me for one year. And they said, so you're, so you're offering the full $120,000? I said, yes. And I'm going to give you $20,000 down. And where did I get that $20,000? From the house that I had just purchased from Jeff, the mechanic. I had forty thousand, and 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 I knew that that property needed about ten thousand dollars in repairs, and I said I'm going to give you full price one hundred twenty thousand. I'm going to give you twenty thousand non refundable right now, and then I'm going to give you the other hundred thousand twelve months from now. And every month I'm going to make a payment to you, and I'm going to pay you seven percent interest. And they said okay. They said well we have a loan on that duplex. I said right. So every month you'll pay the loan, and every couple of months you'll show me proof that you're keeping up with the loan payments, so that. Uh, it doesn't go into foreclosure and, and, and I get the rug pulled out from under me. And they say, yeah, that's not a problem. We don't want to ruin our credit anyway. So long story short, I was able to take the $40,000 from the first seller and use it to get the second seller to be the bank for me. And I gave them $20,000. I said, if I, if I don't give you the other hundred dollars in a year from now, then you get to keep that $20,000 plus all the payments. So they were excited about that because they got a full price offer. They didn't have to pay commissions. And for me, I was able to get 100% financing on that investor property. Now, I know that that was a little bit fast, but um, the point being that seller financing is a strategy that I've used over and over again over the last 22 years. I've used it on multi-million dollar projects. I've used it on little $80,000 houses back in California when I got started. And, and so at Infinity, we teach you all the different strategies that are out there and we show you how you can borrow from sellers to buy properties. How you can use lease options and land contracts and, and seller finance strategies. And then we also teach you how you can use seller financing with your renters on properties that you're looking to sell to really maximize your profits. We do them a lot on mobile homes. And, and, and so the point being that, that um, this whole area of real estate finance and creative financing and seller financing is a knowledge center that you need to acquire. And without the understanding, for example, of, of how banks want to see the numbers and how they want to see your credit score and how they want to see your debt to income ratios. Um, or for example, I've borrowed money from big um, Wall Street funds and they want to see things completely different. They're more concerned about the deal uh, than they are about my credit score. They want to make sure that I'm getting a good deal for 70 cents on the dollar and that, and that my numbers are correct for the construction because they don't want the property, they just want the interest. And so as an investor, I've had to learn to speak Wall Street financing and I've had to learn to speak homeowner buying my own house financing and what do I need to, to, to know for that? And then I've had to learn how to speak seller financing. Um, and, and as I've learned those different strategies over the last 22 years, and, and, and that's a reason why we teach them here at Infinity, um, I've become a better investor because every deal that I see has multiple different ways that I could borrow to buy it and or maximize my profits when I go to sell. And so it's, it's, it's very important. So hopefully just touching on this today sparks an interest in you. Maybe you've done a few deals as an investor and you realize, wow, there's some strategies out there that I haven't learned that I want to take advantage of. 
join us at our next Infinity Investing Workshop and, and, and lay claim to this knowledge because it's invaluable and it's something that's really going to help you 10x your profits and maximize your returns going forward.